Let's take a look at race number 10 at Delmore. On Saturday, it's the Clement L. Hirsch, grade 1, mile and 16th. The purse, $400,000. Should be a pretty good race. Let's take a look at the field. The one horse at 20 to 1. It's Flying Connection coming in from the rail. She should be forwardly placed. Question is, how much pressure can she put on Adair Manor? As you know, Adair Manor is going to be forwardly placed. Flying Connection, well, she's well trapped. She's been at six different tracks in her last six races. Well, now she's trying Delmar again, though. She's been to Delmar before. She hasn't done so well. She's 0 for 3. She does have a second place finish. She put together a few nice wins at some smaller racetracks. Then the Apple Blossom she finished second. She was 26 to 1. Second behind a Dare Manor. Next time out at Churchill, she outran her odds again. She was 13 to 1, finished third in that race. And she disappointed last time out as the favorite. She's 0 for 6. And graded stakes races. And getting 20 to 1 on the one horse. Flying connection. Take a look at your morning line favorite at 3 to 5. It's a dare manner. You gotta love the form that she's in. And you know that she's going to be forward. The question is how much pressure can they put on her? If they can't put pressure on her. Well then it's just going to be a battle for second. Couple races back in Apple Blossom. Anna DeLady tried to put pressure on. Anna DeLady tried her best. By the time they got to the six furlong pole, Anna DeLady was done. She was finished. It's not going to be easy running with this horse. She's simply faster than all the other horses in this race. She has the fastest. Brisnet speed figure, she has the second fastest Brisnet speed figure. She has a couple of triple digit buyer speed figures. The rest of these horses combined have zero triple digit buyer speed figures. She is the fastest horse in the race. Trained by Bob Baffert, written by Juan Hernandez. Four races back in the Breeders' Cup distaff. She couldn't get the lead all to herself in that one. She, well, she didn't do too well. It's a pretty fast pace. She was competing against Idiomatic and Randomized, and neither of those horses are in this race. Let's see what kind of pace we get in this one. Let's see which one of the Todd Fincher horses can pressure up front. He's got two in here. And both of them could be forward in this race. You're getting three to five on the two horse Adair Manor. I will use Adair Manor on my tickets. Six to one. There's a shipper coming in and take on the West Coast favorite. It's Scylla, trained by Bill Mott. Mike Smith. Gets them out. And you gotta love the form that she's in. Three races back, she won by seven. Next time out, Ray three, Churchill. Won by three and a quarter of a length. That last race to Florida de Lee. She went five wide in that race. Well, I'll tell you what, you go back and you watch that race. There's a whole lot of bumping going on in that race, and honestly, I, I think she should have been disqualified. But they kept her up there, and they let her keep the win. She won by a neck. Can she win away from Kentucky? All of her wins have come in the state of Kentucky. She is a well-bred horse. She's side by Tappet. Her dam closed hatches. It's a five time grade one winner. Scylla has never been out of the money. Getting six to one on the three horse. I think she'll be bet down lower than that. I will use the three horse 
on my tickets. Fifteen to one. It's coffee in bed, trained by Richard Mandela. She's done well at the distance of winning the second. Two races back. On a grade two at Santa Anita. The next time out, in a second. To Dare Manor. She's increased her speed figures the last few races. She's going to have to do that again to be competitive with a Dare Manor. You're getting 15 to 1. And four horse, coffee in bed. Look at the 10, Desert Dawn. And she's been keeping some pretty good company, hasn't she? Lots of grade one and grade two races. She's been competitive. Problem is, you know, she's a little bit camera shy. She doesn't like getting her picture taken. She was in this race last year. She finished second, only behind by one length to Adair Manor. You're getting 10 to 1 on a five horse Desert Dawn. I'm going to use Desert Dawn on my tickets. At 12 to 1, Sugarfish. And she's in good form. He races back. She broke her maiden by 10, but look at that. Before that, she was in a maiden claiming $40,000 race. She could have bought this horse for $40,000. Then race after that, after she broke her maiden, an allowance race by head. The next time out, she became a grade two winner. And boy, did she become a grade two winner. She won by nine and three quarters. Quite sure they're glad that she wasn't claimed a few races back. You're getting 12 to one. On the six horse, Sugarfish, she is the only three-year-old in the race. Take a look at Olivia Twist. It's the other Todd Fincher horse who very well could be forwardly placed. She is 0 for 7 in stakes races since December of 2022. The last X-ray she won was at Remington. She won by two. A few races back, she was in an allowance race, but she won that race by two lengths. Last time out, she didn't do so well, losing by 14. She's 0 for 3 at the distance. Taking a big step up in class here, competing against these. You're getting 30 to 1 on a 7 horse, Olivia Twist. Either one of the Todd Fincher horses could put pressure on a Dare Manor. Question is, are they fast enough to run with a Dare Manor? And they're not. Neither of these horses are fast enough to run with a Dare Manor. And to close out this field, let's take a look at the eight. Pretty mischievous at eight to one. She's been in six straight grade one races. Going back to the Kentucky Oaks. She won by a neck. Next time out, she won the acorn. And he cut her back in distance. She won the test. She finished second in the cotillion. And you know, this actually isn't her first trip to the West Coast. This is her first time racing on the West Coast. But it's not her first trip to the West Coast. Because after the Cotillion, they shipped her to Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup distaff. But they scratched her out of that race. She didn't sh ship so well. She was probably tired after that three-year-old campaign. So they gave her some significant time off. Came back, 
go ahead one at Churchill. Finished third. Wasn't too bad behind by five and a quarter. Next time out, she finished third again. A speed figure did re regress a bit. But that was a very slow pace in that race. So I, you didn't expect her to get a very speed fast speed figure out of that one. And getting eight to one on the eight horse, pretty mischievous. All she's done out of 12 races is finish in the money every time. I like using horses like this in my exotics, and I will use her in my exotics. So these are the horses I'm using. I'm using a Dare Manor, Desert Dorn, Celia, and Pretty Mischievous. Horse I'm going to pick to win. I'm going to go with the fastest horse in the field. And I think they will try to put pressure on. But they can't run with them. I'm going with Adair Manor. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know who you're picking in this race. Good luck.